There are three different dopamine tracts in the brain, and these include the mesolimbic or mesocortical, which affects the thought and mood, tuberoinfundibular, which affects the release of the prolactin from the pituitary, and then nigrostriatal, which affects the extrapyramidal motor activity. So in patients with Parkinson's disease, there is loss of nigrostriatal dopaminergic neurons and thus decreased dopaminergic activity in here will cause Parkinson disease. In patients with schizophrenia, on the other hand, increased dopaminergic activity in the mesolimbic or mesocortical dopamine tracts will cause schizophrenia. So here there is increased activity in psychotic patients while with Parkinson there is decreased activity of dopamine. And in this video I would like to strictly focus on the antipsychotic medication, the effects of which are mediated by decreasing dopamine levels in the mesolimbic or mesocortical dopamine tracts. So there are two different types of antipsychotic medications, typical and atypical. Typical is divided into two types, high potency and low potency. Examples of high potency typical antipsychotics include the fluphenazine as well as the haloperidol. And the way I memorize it is that there is a halo that has wings. So flying halo goes for flu, for flying fluphenazine, and halo goes for haloperidol. And then the low potency antipsychotics include the thioridazine and the chlorpromazine. And the side effects of these medications include extrapyramidal side effects as well as non-specific effects. So high potency medications are mainly associated with extrapyramidal side effects, which I will discuss in a minute. And then low potency are mainly associated with non-specific side effects such as alpha 1 blockade which causes orthostatic hypotension as well as anti muscarinic effects which causes dry mouth and this is more commonly seen with tyridazine and chlorpromazine in addition these medications are associated with decreased vision and the reason for tyridazine is due to deposits in the retina so the way i memorize it is tyridazine is associated with deposits in the retina while chlorpromazine is associated with deposits in cornea and then for the high potency medications there are very few non-specific effects but they are mainly associated with extra pyramidal side effects so as I mentioned, fluphenazine and haloperidol are high potency antipsychotics and this is the mnemonic that I use, flying halo. So we have a halo with the wings and flying goes for fluphenazine while halo goes for haloperidol. And the side effects of these medications are mainly extra pyramidal and these include dystonia, akathasia, Parkinson as well as tardive dyskinesia. So the manifestations of these symptoms, the way you can memorize it is dystonia usually happens in four hours of the administration of medications, akathisia in four days, Parkinsonism in four weeks, and then tardive dyskinesia in four months. Now dystonia presents with the sustained muscle contraction. So for instance, if there is a contraction of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, then these patients will have their neck directed towards one direction and they can't move the head to the other side. And then the treatment for these conditions is the anticholinergic agents like diphenhydramine or trihexphenidyl, or you can provide with the Botox injection. In this example, for instance, you can provide Botox index injection in the sternocleidomastoid to release the muscle contraction. The next condition, akathisia, is associated with the inner sensation of restlessness and usually these patients are treated with the propranolol. About four weeks later, Parkinsonism symptoms such as bradykinesia or slowed movement develops in these patients and again the treatment is the anticholinergics such as diphenhydramine or trihexphenidyl. And then finally, these patients present with tardive dyskinesia where there is an involuntary repetitive body movements that most commonly affect the lips and the tongues. And then the treatment for this condition is finally you will have to withdraw the drugs. Now the reason these patients are presenting with these symptoms is that typical antipsychotics 
are decreasing dopamine in mesolimbic and mesocortical tracts in addition to the other tracts. And thus, due to the decreased level of dopamine in the nigrostriatal tracts, these patients present with these extrapyramidal side effects. At the same time, decreased levels of dopamine in the tuberal infundible artery causes prolactinoma in these patients. So other adverse reactions that may be present in includes the hyperprolactinoma. In addition, these patients can present with the neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is more commonly seen with high potency typical antipsychotics, as I mentioned, like fulfenazine or haloperidol. And the symptoms of these patients include the muscle rigidity, rhabdomyolysis, high fever, and autonomic instability. And you will have to treat these patients by providing either dantrolene or dopamine agonists such as bromocryptine. The next class of medications are atypical antipsychotics such as clozapine, risperidone, olanzapine. And these medications have two mechanisms of action. One, they are acting on the dopamine D2 receptors, more specifically in the mesolimbic tract and less in the nigrostriatal tract. So therefore, there would be less extrapyramidal side effects with the atypical antipsychotics, which is because they are more specific in the mesolimbic tract. In addition, they will antagonize the 5-HT2A receptors, which are the serotonin receptors. And thus, it's good for the inhibition of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So as a reminder, positive symptoms of schizophrenia include hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, and then finally catatonic behaviors. On the other hand, negative symptoms include the flat effect, social withdrawal, and lack of motivation. So the negative symptoms of schizophrenia can be treated with atypical antipsychotics, while typicals are effective mainly against the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Now, some of the high yield adverse reaction of these atypical antipsychotics include agranulocytosis with clozapine. So it causes agranulocytosis. And thus, in these patients, you have to regularly check the levels of white blood cells. With olanzapine, it causes increased weight so these patients quickly become fat. And the way I memorize it is that olanzapine, so olanzapine, O, it looks like a fat person to me. So olanzapine causes weight gain. And then with the ziprosidon, it causes the increased QT interval. And that concludes our discussion.